This is the analysis guide for doing a mixed ANOVA. So the experiment we're looking at today is all about how muscle feedback can affect people's memory. And basically what happened in this experiment is participants were put into one condition on a between subjects basis. This condition is just labeled as condition in the data set. And if you look at the variable view, it's labeled as one, drink action, two, control. So what happened in this experiment is participants performed one of these two actions, so whether the drink action or a control action, which is hands flat on the desk. And while they were doing these actions, they had a computer screen in front of them that was showing alcohol-related words and musical instrument-related words on the screen at a rate of one appearing per second with a one second gap in between them and just uh, in a random order so they could see an alcohol related word or a control word and in total there was 20 alcohol related words and 20 control musical instrument related words. Following doing this participants then had to recall a num how, as many words as they could to get a score for the number of alcohol related words that they correctly recalled after being presented with the words and the number of music related words they recall after being presented with the words. So this is our within subject factor essentially, the number of alcohol words and the number of musical instrument related words. The dependent variable being recall, the number of things that were recalled and there can be alcohol recall and music recall. So this gives us a two by two design because we've got a between subject factor of condition which is two levels which is doing the drink action versus having hands flat on the table and then we've got our within subjects factor is word type alcohol word recalled and musical word recalled it's hypothesized in this experiment that doing the drink action will improve recall of alcohol related words compared to music related words and having hands flat on the desk there should be no difference between the number of alcohol related and music related words recalled. This is because muscle feedback can influence memory in some way, it can influence the encoding of information. The concept is that if you're doing a drink action this is something that's conditioned to be associated with alcohol consumption in your brain so it primes the brain to process alcohol related information as opposed to music related information. So we ran this experiment and we've got our recall for alcohol related words and our recall for music related words and condition here for some of the variables in this data set but we're not analysing them at the moment. So to run this we need to do a 2 by 2 mixed ANOVA. To do this you just go to general linear model and you actually select repeated measures because we've got a repeated measures factor that we need to label in it. So we go to repeated measures and we can call that word type and that's got two levels because that's going to be alcohol related and music related words. Then we click define. So we need to tell it what within subjects variables are. So this is going to be our alcohol recall and music recall. doesn't matter what order you put those two things in there at all. So we've got alcohol versus music words recalled and then we can put in our between subjects factor. So this is what's going to make it a mixed ANOVA and that's just experimental condition that we have there. There's a few options that we should ask for. Descriptive statistics of course, estimates of effect size. We can also ask for homogeneity tests because we do have homogeneity variance in this case because we have a between subjects factor. So the between subjects factor condition needs to be checked for homogeneity of variance. We can ask it to display means for all these things as well and compare main effects as well if we want. The thing is though, you know, comparing main effects for condition and word type is not really relevant because both of these only have two levels. So if our ANOVA tells us there's a significant effect of condition, we know those two conditions differ from each other. We don't need to do any post hoc tests on that. The ANOVA is telling us these things different. We just need to look at our descriptive statistics to be able to work out well, what's causing it, which condition is having greater overall recall, if that's the case. So we don't really need to compare main effects. 
you could we can add that and again if you wanted to look up the interaction and edit the syntax um, to be able to further analyze the interaction you could do that but we're going to look at it in a different way today anyway so we can just click continue there we could ask for plots if we want so we could have let's say word type on the horizontal axis condition separate lines you click add so that'll give us an idea what of our data does actually look like and then we click OK and this gives us our output <clears throat> so it's a relatively straightforward output that we get and it's pretty familiar to you all it's like a cross between a between subjects and over and within subjects and over output everything matched together so as you can see it's got our within subjects factor label there word type and dependent variables recall so it's alcohol recall music recall so we know we've coded that correctly then our between subjects factor is labeled here just condition drink action versus control number of people in each condition so here's our descriptive statistics table it's a relatively straightforward table so what we've got here is when people are doing the drink action that's the number of alcohol words and the standard deviation of the number of alcohol words they recall and when they are doing the control action this is the number of alcohol related words and the standard deviation that they recall same thing applies for music related words so means standard deviation for when they do the drink action and for when they're doing the control condition do this variable here is so total this is just the mean number of alcohol words that participants recall regardless of the between subject condition and this is just the same for the other way around this is the mean number of music related words that they recall regardless of the between subject condition so we'd write this up and we produce a neat descriptive statistics table accordingly so the first thing that we need to look at and the this is a test of the assumptions of a mixed ANOVA. This is Box's test for quality of covariance matrices. And like all these assumption checks, we want them to be non significant. However, Box is a little bit different because Box is an incredibly conservative measure. And what matters with Box is really, we, it, it can still be statistically significant and not a problem. It's only a problem if the p value is less than 0 0.001. So essentially, if this value in the table is just zeros, if that's the case then you have a problem with equality of the covariance matrices in your data first table appears is our multivariate test table we can ignore that for now next table is more into these tests of sphericity sphericity is the a assumption of a within subjects design and we don't need to look at this why because we have sphericity assumed our within subjects iv only has two levels so we know this cannot be a problem. We can't have a problem with sphericity if, an, if a within subjects IV only has two levels to it. Three or more levels, then it needs to be checked. But in this case, it's fine. So we can know we can look at a sphericity assumed line in the subsequent table. So this is the first bit of the analysis that we need to look at. So this is our tests of within subjects effect and our within subject main effect of word type. We have sphericity assumed because there's only two levels to word type. We've only got alcohol related or music related words to recall. So do we have a main effect of word type? Yes, we do. We've got highly significant main effect of word type with a big effect size as well. So we just write this bit up accordingly. Now we don't need post hoc tests for this because we know there is a significant difference between the number of alcohol related and the number of control words recalled. So we just need to know well what type of words getting recalled more. To look at this, we just need to have a look at this table. So what's causing that? Well, this is the thing we need to look at. This is the number of alcohol related words recalled compared to the number of music related words to be recalled regardless of anything. Now, as you can see, generally speaking, participants are recalling more alcohol related words than they are music related words. So we'd explain our ANOVA accordingly. There's a significant main effect of word type right up the ANOVA, and this was due to significantly more alcohol related words being recalled than control words 
regardless of the experimental condition participants were in. So that's our first main effect, written up and described. You'll note now, the next thing that appears in this table is actually the interaction. So we're just going to leave that for now, because what we need to do is look at our other main effect. It's always better to present things as main effect, main effect, then interaction, rather than write about a main effect, then an interaction, and then back to a main effect again. So we need to look a bit further down for our main effect of our between subjects factor. So the first thing we need to do is look at our Levine's test, and you'll see it's produced two. So the reason it's got two is because it's checking we've got homogeneity of variance for the effect of the experimental condition on alcohol recall and homogeneity variance for the effect of the experimental condition on music recall as well. And as you know, in these cases, if they are non-significant, this is a good thing, that means we have met the test assumption. So in both these cases, you can see, we do not have a significant Levine's test, so we have homogeneity variance for our main effect of the experimental condition. So we can therefore just look straight into this table now. This is our test of between subjects effects. And what we need to do is just look at this part of it here to see if we have a significant effect of condition on overall recall. So this is the effect of the experimental condition, whether they're drinking the glass of water, the hands are flat on the table, on just recall. Not on specifics, just generally do people recall more? It doesn't have to be alcohol or music related, just in general overall is recall affected in some way. And as you can see from the example here, there is no statistically significant effect of experimental condition on overall recall. And you just write this up, it doesn't need any more explaining, you just simply have no significant main effect. So it's all well and good, but what we're most interested in, what the hypothesis is really looking at, is is there a significant word type by condition interaction? Remember, the hypothesis is straightforward. That if we think that people, if people are drinking the glass of water, that's going to facilitate the recall of the alcohol-related words compared to music-related words. When hands are flat on the desk, we expect that we see no difference between those two conditions. So, this is really important then we need to look at our interaction if we find our interaction we can do further analyses to work out what's going on to work out well is the pattern results what we predicted or are we seeing a very different pattern results so we look at this table word type by condition interaction we've got sphericity assumed in this case and what you can see is we've got a statistically significant interaction between word type and condition very very large effect as well so we can be pretty confident when we do some further analysis, we're going to get some nice clear effects. So we just simply write up this part accordingly. Of course, now what we need to do is to look at some additional analysis to do some post-op tests to find out you know, what is specifically co causing this effect. But before we do that, if we just quickly scroll down and we can look at our profile plots of estimated marginal means and indeed look at the estimated marginal means themselves. Well. As you can see, word type 1, word type 2, so word type 1 is alcohol, 2 is control, and drink action is the blue line. And it does appear to have a very big effect. We can't really tell the magnitude of this really without error bars, but it seems pretty clear that when people are doing the drink action, they're recall, recalling a hell of a lot more alcohol-related words than they are recalling control words. And in the control condition, there seems to be very little difference between the two conditions. I know if we look at our estimated marginal means here, you can see that the mean for doing the drink action and recall calling 14.65 alcohol related words compared to 10.94 control related words, whereas in the control condition, there's very little difference between the two conditions at all both in and around 12. So this is probably, we are going to confirm our hypothesis, but we should just do a little bit more testing to, be, to ensure that we've got this statistically significant difference here and not here, as we predicted. So as I said before, there's lots of ways we can do that. We could edit the syntax like we did in the between subjects and over example, and it involve exactly the same process as doing it as shown in the between subjects and over video, but we'll look at it in a different way. Here. So, 
So what we want to do to do some further analysis of this, do some post hoc test on this, is simply to see if there's a significant difference in number of alcohol related compared to the number of music related words we've called when people do the drink action, and then repeat that for people who are doing the control action who just have hands flat on the desk. So one way we can do this is to split our data set into two. So to do this, what we simply do is we want to treat them as though we've got two separate groups. One who did the drink action and then a totally separate group who did the hands flat on the desk action and then we can see we can do a series of t-tests to see if there's a difference in the number of alcohol related words recalled compared to the number of musical related words recalled in the two separate conditions to do this we can just go to data then we go to this variable here split file so the split file basically split your data set to two without creating new data sets it just merely as process knows it's now treating them as two separate things and we click compare groups and then click condition and then click OK and essentially nothing will happen you can't really tell anything's happened with your data but now SPSS is treating it as two separate data sets and everything you do will do it twice so what we can do now is we go to analyze compare means paired samples t-test and we want to compare alcohol recall compared to music recall so we just ask you to do one t-test comparing these two recalls and then we click OK and as you can see it's done everything twice it's done it once for people doing the drink action and once for people doing the control action so everything's done twice so what is this telling us and as we predicted we do find a statistically significant difference between a number of alcohol related words and a number of control words recalled when people do the drink action however when people do the control action there's no significant difference between the number of alcohol related words and the number of control related words recalled and you can see the descriptive statistics as we looked at before tell you the direction of this association so they are recalling more alcohol than control and it's statistically significant and we'd write this up accordingly we can also get an effect size for this as well which is a really useful reason of doing this process we can we can actually quantify the size of the effect and um, so we can calculate a cones d in which we need to use the statistics here and we also need to look at the paired correlations between them when we use this website which is in this link here and then we simply just write this section up accordingly as well and that would give us a whole coherent write-up of a mixed anode.